Welcome to Campfire. Today, we're gonna be looking at how you can use panels to organize your notes, plans, and anything else you need to keep track of to tell your story. Specifically, we're going to look at panels in the desktop app and browser versions of Campfire. The mobile app has panels too, but they look a bit different. Panels are a part of most modules in Campfire, such as the characters module I'm in right now. Once you learn how to use them, you'll have a great handle on how most of the modules work. Also, I should mention there's no panels or bonus features hidden behind a paywall. Everything we show you here today, you'll be able to do as well, no matter if you're subscribed to Campfire or not. Now let's get started. When you create an element, it will come with a few panels ready to go. Each module has a default template of panels and you can create your own here from the details tab of your sidebar. We're just going to start with a blank element for now though. Create panels with the plus button down here in the bottom right of the screen. However, note that different types of elements sometimes use the plus button to add something besides a panel, depending on what module you're working in. For example, you can use it to add cards to a flowchart and relationships or sections in the encyclopedia module. Most of the time though, you'll get this panel selection box where you can pick the type you want. We're going to go through all of the seven basic panel types, starting with the attributes panel. I'm going to resize it a bit by dragging the panel from this handle in the bottom right corner, reposition by dragging this move icon, and I think I'll also color it using the settings from the top right corner here. I like how this looks. The attributes panel is a great way to show foundational information for your page. We can select attributes using this button in the lower left of the panel. That opens a menu where we can browse and select which attributes to include. Since I'm making a character, I might want to include their name, age, and something to describe their personality. Or if I'm making this character for a game, I could add some attributes that help me quickly find relevant information like their alignment, class, or hit points. The library of available attributes will change based on what module you're working in. Characters have attributes that address personality, goals, and backstory, whereas items attributes focus on materials and language attributes are based on linguistics and so on. There are hundreds of different attributes across all of Campfire, so try them out in each module that supports them. Once you've selected the attributes you would like to use, click Confirm and you can find out the information in the boxes provided and order them how you like. Note that there are different kinds of attributes, so each panel is going to look a bit different depending on what information you include in it. Also, if you have other elements like a supporting cast or locations, you can tag those elements into multi-select and textile attributes by typing the at button. And if you want to hide the units on a number, you can do that as well. Also, each of the multi-select attributes have a preset list of suggestions you can pick from, but you can also create your own entries by just typing them in and hitting enter. If you don't want the suggestions to appear, just turn off the use default options switch here. The text panel is exactly what you think it's for, text. It's great for anything from character backgrounds to important information or just a quick note. To format the text, highlight a section and use the toolbar that appears above it. For things like choosing a different font, you'll need to edit or swap the project theme. You can find themes and more info on them here next to the templates button. We also have a complete written guide on Campfire Learn. List panels are made up of a series of entries with titles and descriptions, like a bulleted list minus the bullet points. To add the list items in the list panel, click on the add button in the bottom left corner of the panel. To add images to the list panel, click on the three dots next to the entry and click set image. This will open up your image library where you can choose the image you'd like to appear next to your entry. You can get a bit more detailed with lists by creating sections to further organize their contents. Click the plus button while you're working within a section to add a new list item to the section you're working in. Similar to lists, 
the Stats panel tracks numerical information. A stat lets you set the number and units, but you can hide the unit if it's not helpful for that particular stat. Stats panels are great to show details like population of a location or character stats for an RPG. If you need a bit of extra information about a stat, you can also add a description next to it, like so. Let's talk about image panels next. Add an image by clicking on the Add button in the bottom left corner of the panel. This opens up your image gallery for you to select images to add to the panel. If you need to upload a new image, you can click the box at the top of the image gallery or drag them in. Once you've selected and confirmed the images you want to include in the panel, you can scroll through them using the arrows at the bottom of the panel. Image panels have a few extra options as well, image cropping and captions. Image cropping determines if the image is automatically cropped to fit in the panel or if it should always be completely visible. Cropping might cut off some edges of the image, but the panel is always filled with the image. If you turn off image cropping, the full image is always in view with a border around it. Captions are short text fields that only appear when the image panel overlay is visible. By default, that's just when you're hovering over or interacting with the panel, but you can change that in your account settings if you like. Speaking of which, don't forget to check your account settings at some point. There's a lot of handy options there. My favorite is the prioritized list tab, which makes navigating through Campfire much faster for me. Let's move right along to the table panel. This one acts as a small spreadsheet within a panel. In the table panel, you can add columns and rows in the page options and organize large amounts of information. Just select the number of rows and columns you want and create it. Once you have a table, you can edit its contents, right click cells to style or make quick changes. And if you need to change your number of rows or columns, there's some buttons for that below. Finally, let's chat about the links panel. These aren't quite hyperlinks to new pages, but rather a way to show connections between two elements in your campfire projects. To create a link, click the Add button, then select the element you want to link. The element you select and the element you are in will be connected. You can click on a link to the linked element. If you create a links panel there as well, you'll find the link persists on that page too. There are a few ways links might be created for you automatically as well, like if you create a relationship between two characters in the relationships module, but you won't see that unless those characters have links panels. Okay, so those are all the panels, but there's one more really exciting feature that they all share. Panel visibility. This is really exciting for anyone who is sharing their project or has it public on Campfire Explore. Let's take a look at how it works. Visibility options are located in all panels, options, menus in the top right. By default, they'll all be marked as visible, but as the project creator, you can change that at any time. These are the three visibility states. By default, all panels are visible, so anyone with access to the element can also see the panel. When a panel is set to hide from viewers, people with view only access in Campfire Write or Browsing Explorer will not be able to see the panel's contents though they will still see that a panel is there. The project's creator and editors will be able to see and edit the panel freely in Campfire Write. If you select Hide from Everyone, only the project's creator can see the panel's content. It will be hidden to everyone else, even their editors. You can change the panel's visibility at any time, so you can comfortably work on parts of your story without having readers spoil anything for themselves or hide important information that your players haven't encountered yet. And that wraps it up for panels. Our team is constantly working to update Campfire, so in time there may be some adjustments to what you've seen in this video. If that's the case, we'll make sure to update that in the description as well as in our written guide on Campfire Learn, where you can find even more tutorials and other cool articles. If you have any questions about Campfire, you can leave a comment or reach out to us on social media. Thanks for watching.